100 cents, that's one dollar. Exactly, yeah. Relating percents and decimals to money is fantastic. Can you turn your the, brain. Oh, Think about can it. Can you turn the whiteboard a little bit? It's hard for me to see the Yeah, is that better? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so are you done writing that down, sweetie? Yeah. Okay, so now let's do some let's do some challenging ones, okay? I'll erase this. What? This one's not super challenging. Well, it's not challenging at all, but then I'm going to follow it up with a couple of more challenging ones. Let's take a look at this. How would I change that into decimals and percents? And I know we're going to go a little bit slow for my fourth graders. It's going to feel slow to you guys, but that's okay. Oh, I heard somebody say it. Point 14. Point 14, yep. And then how would we write it as a percent? Oh, 14%. 14%. Yeah. That's the easy part, 14%. So now, what if I had a different denominator? What if my denominator was not 100? So here is 3 tenths. Oh, wait, what, if what we, would we do to get 30? that where we want? 0 0.03, 0 0.03, 0 0.03. 0 0.03. It would be, so right now it's 0.3, because it's 3 tenths, right? But we want to make it into a number. We want the denominator to be 100. 0 0.103. 0 0.103. Yeah. Oh, 0.3? Oh, does anybody know? I bet James. Wait, is it, is it, is it 0.3? <laughs> I'll show you. I'll show you. So we want we want the denominator to be 100 in order to turn it into a percent. You want to this? Uh huh. What did so? What do we do to this 10 to make it 100? What do we have? To do? Zero. Mm -hmm. Or multiply it by 10. Let Let's do that. So we're gonna. You can draw this on your piece of paper too and write times 10. So 10 times 10 turns that denominator into a 100. But what we do to the bottom is 10 times 10. 10 times 10. Oh, you do 3 times 10? Yep. So and that's that what our numerator become 30, 10. 30, 100. 30. Yeah. Now, now is that easy to turn into a percent? Yes. Yeah. yeah, it's 30 percent. Or 30 hundredths. So this is a way we can write the same thing, right? But we had to change our denominator to make it 100. Okay. Let's try another one. What if I had four fifths? Oh, wait, there's the, the size. What the fuck? Um, point. First, we have to do something to our denominator. So don't say point anything yet. We have to do something here. What do we have? Is it 20? <clears throat> Oliver, what did you say, honey? Multiply by 10. Would we multiply by 10? Let's try it. So if I multiply 5 times 10, I would get 50. Multiply by 20. We multiply by 20. Oh, yeah, because 5. So 5 times 20 
gets us to that 100 denominator that we want. We want that denominator to be 100. Then I have to do the same thing up here, don't I? So then what would I have? So James, I saw that you private messaged me and yes, sir, Bob, you were correct. What do I do? I have this times this. What is that? 80. 80. Mm -hmm. So now I know that four fifths is equivalent to 80 one hundredths, right? Which means I can now firmly say four fifths is 80%. 80%. So if you ate four out of five slices of pizza, you would have eaten 80% of the pizza. And we could also write it like 0 0.80, right? Ah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay, so now let's do another one. Remember, when you're playing with things around your computer, it makes noise. That's noisy. Okay, so now I have 11 twentieths. What do we do first? Multiply the 20 by 5. Tell me why we do that. Um, because you know that 5 times 2 is 10, and 2 times 5 is 10. Mm -hmm. So know, we want to get that denominator to 100, right? So you it also know that 10 that. times 10 is 20. Yeah. So 20 times 5 would be 100. So then what do we do? What's the next step? You do 11 times 5. Yeah, and what's that? 55. Uh-huh. 55. Okay, so now how would I write that? Um, As a point. 50, 50, 55 percent. And also point 55. 5 percent. Yeah, 55 percent. 55% or so 0.55, right? Because that's 55 hundredths. Is this making sense to your brains, friends? It yeah. makes sense to mine. Okay. But I don't know if it makes sense to mine. Okay, I'm seeing sense. a couple of people saying no. That's okay. It makes sense. It's going. Hearing a lot of background noise in someone's house. If you have a noisy house, turn yourself off, please. Okay. Okie dokie. What if I had what if I had a decimal and I wanted to make it into a fraction and a percent? What would I do? Done. This is a trick question. It's not a trick question, but this is a, a new question. I'll show you, I'll show you how to do it, okay? So this is 171 thousandths, right? We know that because it has three place values to the right of the decimal, that we are dealing with a thousandths, right? But we want it to be a 100th in order to get to that percent, that sweet spot, so that we know the percent. So let's write it as a fraction first. So there it is. There's our fraction. 
So here it is 171 thousandths, and here is also 171 thousandths. But I want the denominator to be 100. What do I do to get it to be 100? You do 1 minus 17. No. I want the denominator to be 100. Remember, denominator is the bottom number. We want that to be 100. What do I do to this minus thousand? It by, uh, minus it by... Um, minus it by... Wait, minus it by 10. If we took 10 away from 100, we would have 990. 990. 1,000, I mean? 1, divide 90. by 10. Divide by 10. Right? Yeah, divide. So if we divide by 10 on the bottom, we have to divide by 10 divide. on the top. So it stays balanced. It stays equivalent, right? So if we divided 171 by 10, who thinks they know what it would be? Scarlett, what would that be? Did you say 17.1? Yes. What did you? Is that what you said? 17.1 is right. Yeah. Remember when we were dividing by 10, we learned that we just moved the decimal point over one? Yeah. Yeah. So here's 17.1 over 100. So then what would be our percent? How would we write that as a percent? James, yes. And it's as easy as it sounds. If I have this per this, it's really already done for you, right? Because it's already 17.1 per 100. So who wants to tell me what it would be for our percent? Mm hmm. Yeah. Oliver Zhang, yep. Yeah. Michaela, do you think you know what it would be? You've been working in your percents book, right? James got it. James, go ahead and say it, buddy, for everybody to hear. Seventeen point one percent. Yeah, it's as simple as that. Once you have that number over one hundred, you now have your percent. That's all it is. It's super easy. So it's seventeen point one percent. And maybe some of you thought that you can't have a decimal point within a percentage, but you can. It can be seventeen point one percent. Like, have you ever heard somebody say? Well, I'm 99.99% sure. That means they're almost 100% sure. Have you ever heard anybody say something like that? 99.99999% sure. <laughs> That's really there, but there, But there is no maximum of how many nines you can put on there, though. No, there's, it's never ending, right? Yeah. You can have nines about... Nine. You could have them a mile long. You could have them from the school to the barn. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to type in chat how long it can be. Okay, well, that seems like a waste of time, but <laughs> you go for it. All right, I'm going to now, we're going to move to our first worksheet. I told you I'd get to the worksheets. I wanted to give you the intro first. Now, this one, remember how Gabe started out our class by saying, if you think about money, it's easier? That's exactly right. If you think about money, it's a lot easier. So here we have our little worksheet doodah. Let's take a look at the first part. It says introduce percent. Well, that's what we just did. We just introduced percent. 
we're going to circle each percent of the 100 pennies. All right. So if you want to get your pencil, where's my pencil? Oh gosh. I brought my marker, but not my pencil. Let me grab that, friends. I'll be right back. Maybe I should, uh, I'm get, I, even though she left, I'm going to keep my video pen. I'm right here. It doesn't <laughs> take that long to get a pencil. Nope, I'm back. I'm back. I'm going to use a red pencil. Maybe you'll be able to see it more clearly, too. So we're going to circle each percent of the 100 pennies. So who thinks they know how many pennies I should circle to show 1%? One, I don't have my worksheet. Okay, that's okay. You can just watch. I'm, I'm recording this too. So when you get your worksheet, you can just go back and rewatch it and see what to do. Okay, sweetheart? So I would circle for this 1%, I'm going to circle one penny. Can you see that? 1% is one penny. And there is a lesson on our YouTube channel that shows money, and we're doing it in decimals. It's the same thing, okay? So now, how many pennies would I circle for 5%? Five pennies. Five pennies, yeah. So I would circle one, two, three, four, five pennies. Now, and I'm thinking you guys are cracking this code. You're figuring it out. How many pennies would I circle for? 10%. 10 pennies. 10 pennies, yeah. So I would circle this whole line. There's 10 pennies. Okay, 14%. How many pennies? 14 pennies. 14 pennies. How many pennies for 20%? 20 pennies. 20 pennies. See how I've circled both top rows? Or I suppose you could do, you could do them this way too. It doesn't matter. Either way. So if I have 37% of a dollar, how many pennies do I have? If I have 37% of a dollar. Xander, do you know? Thirty-seven. I would have 37 pennies. Yeah. So let's see, let's circle 37. So here's 30. And then I'm going to count seven more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, okay. How about 50%? Sylvia, how many pennies would I have if I had 50% of a dollar? 50 pennies. Yes. So we would circle half of all these pennies. 50% of a dollar is half of a dollar, right? 50 pennies plus 50 pennies is one dollar. Okay. Um, let's see. Isabel, if I had 62% of a dollar, how many pennies would I have? Six, 60. Listen carefully, sweetheart. If I have 62% of a dollar, how many 62. pennies? I would have 62 pennies. Okay, Hania. So I would circle 62. Miss Hania, if I have 75% of a dollar, how many pennies do I have, Hania? 75? Yeah, yeah. Is this starting to make a little bit more sense, honey? Yeah. Okay, okay. So I would circle 
5%, which is 75 pennies. I'm already on 89%. <laughs> cool. Good. So I'm already done. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Let me see. Who else can I ask? Isaac, if I had 89% of a dollar, how many pennies would I have? 89. Okay. Now I'm done. Get it. So you get it. Good. Kaiden, if I had 100%. Of a dollar, how many pennies would I have? All of them. You would have all of them, which is how many? 100. 100, yes. <laughs> okay. So when we relate it to pennies, does it make it more understandable, Miss Hania? Because before you were shaking your head. Is that making it better? Yeah. Okay, okay, good. Let's, we're going to do the next exercise, which is saying use the percents in exercise one and mark each percent on the 100 millimeter line. Okay. So we're going to mark our percents by. Mm -hmm. Finished with exercise two. Are you? Okay. So if we have 1%, we're going to mark right at the one. It's kind of hard to see because it's so small. In fact, I'm going to let you guys do that on your own because I don't think you'll be able to see what I'm doing. But basically, you would count each one of these little ticks is a one hundredth, okay? So right, the very first tick would be our one percent. And then we would count five. There's, there's the five. There's five percent. And when we get to 10, there's 10%. 14 is right before that five mark. So we would write it like that, okay? It's basically just counting. So this line is cut up into 100 little, little teeny tick marks. And remember, we were learning about tick marks before. And so you just count them. It's hard to see though. So you gotta get, you have to have your paper right in front of you. Okay, number three is use the percents in exercise one. Label the last square centimeter that represents each percent of the 100 square centimeters. This looks like something that we use a lot in Montessori, right? What does it remind you of, friends? Um, a hundred chart. The 100 chart, yeah. Our 100 board and our 100 chart. So if this if 100 equals one, then these are all parts of a whole. So these are representative of hundredths, okay? So we're gonna count the squares and we're going to put our, the same numbers that were up here, we're gonna mark in here. So 1% would just be that, okay? So if you have your paper with you, you can go ahead and do that now. And then what's our next percent we need to find? Five, right? Five percent. So I'm gonna count over five. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm gonna draw my five percent right there. I'm not gonna color the whole thing. We're just gonna color the square, okay? Then I would go to 10%. Here is 10% because I counted over 10 squares. Next would be 14%. So here's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. There's our 14 squares. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, and so then I'll count 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37. 37 percent. Next is 50 percent. Well, I know this is 40, so that must be 50. So there's 50. That's the halfway point. Next, we have 62 percent. 
<laughs> Good. So here's 60, 61, 62. Next we have 75%. Well, I know this will be 70. 71, 72, 73, 74, 75. Next is 89. So I know this is 80. And 89 is right below it and to the left. So I'm gonna do 89%. And last but not least is 100%. So your squares should be colored like that. Scarlett, does that make sense to you, honey? Good girl, okay. All right. Now we're gonna we're gonna do some. Wait, this doesn't, wait, this doesn't make sense because it because if this because where because where there should be eighty nine, that's in ninety nine. Oh wait, now now I understand. <laughs> okay. Oh. Yeah. Oh good. I'm glad I'm glad you figured that out. Okay, so the next the next thing we're gonna learn we're kind of taking a big jump. Okay, we've got fraction to decimal to percent, and that's the relationship we're exploring today. And I'm going to show you a fun way to learn how to get to decimals and percents. And you guys have done dividing a lot. So I think this will be pretty easy for you. For some of you, it might you might have to think a little bit for it, but it's fraction to decimals percent. What, honey? Done with the page that says fraction to decimal two percent number one. Yeah, I'm not surprised. This is this is not hard for you, buddy. Let's take a look at the first one. Okay, the first one I have on my page. It it looks like this. Okay, it just says a number one on there. So I'm just using that one. Yeah. Okay, so I have one half. Okay, we already know one half is 50%. We've worked with our fractions a ton. We know that this is 50%, right? Hania, did you know that one half is 50%? No. Scarlett, did you know that one half is 50%? No? Okay. Okay. That's good. That's good to know. So let me just say it here. One half is 50%. And I'm going to show you a fun technique using because long division. And I know some of you are loving long division. Raise your hand if you love long division. I also know way how we know that one half can, is also 50% because, you know, one half is, is five is 10 is 5 tenths and that's one half and if you just add um like 15 more or if you have wait 15 and you and since 5 wait, well if you cut 15 like right down the middle then it's it could one to one half I see what you're trying to say. I understand what you're trying to say. Yeah. So one half, let me, let me show you. Remember what we did before where we made our denominator 100? This is one way to do it. We can do it this way. Two times what equals 100? Two times 50. Yeah. Thank you, Gabriel. Two times 50 equals I didn't actually say that. I'm but I knew, that I knew you were going to. So remember, what I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top, right? So what's 1 times 50? 50. 50, yeah. So now we have 50 hundredths, correct? And we've learned already that once you have, once you have that 100 in your denominator, that now you just know you have 50%. Boom. But there's another way. And I want to show you this way. I think some of you are going to really like it because you love division. Okay. 
So this is, this is the first way. In fact, I'm going to leave it there and I'll just move it up. Okay. The other way we can do is we can divide two into one. So this one over two is also a division problem. Okay. That, that means the top number is being divided by the bottom number. And you might say, but teacher Kelly, who does not go into one? And you're right. It doesn't. So we have to put a decimal point and a zero and another zero to find out, hmm, what is our percentage? So does two go into 100? Scarlet. Yes, it does. Scarlet, how many yeah. times does two go into 100? Um, um, two times something equals 100. Two times what equals 50. 100? 50. Yeah, so we're going to just put our little decimal point right there. We're going to write five zero. Oh, oh so now... 0 0.50 is the same as 50 hundredths, right? We've been learning all about decimals. And so you know, if you have a 0 0.50, you know that's 50 hundredths, which is the same as 50%. Okay, let's do the next one. The next one is one fifth. So we can do it both ways. In fact, let's do it both ways, just so that our brains start catching on to how to do this. So the first way I showed you is to t turn that denominator into 100, right? What do I do to turn that denominator into 100? You, um, you multiply, yeah, you multiply and you do five, and you do five times 10. Five times 10 is 50. 20. Yeah, five times 20. Oh yeah, 20. Yeah. And then whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. So then one times 20 is what? 20. 20. Me. 20. Mm. Which means what's our percent? 20 over 100. 20 over 20. 20%. 20%. Da, 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 da. Or we could also write it like this, right? If we want it in decimal form. 20%, 20 hundredths. Same thing. Okay, now let's do it the new way. Let's do it the long division way. We're going to take this number and we're going to divide it into this number. Okay, so the denominator is the div divisor. And then we have our one, but we need to add a couple of zeros. Done. So how many times does five go into 100, James? 20 times. 20, 20 times. It goes in 20 times. Boom. Is the same as 20%. It's the same as 20%. Remember, because once you get to 20 hundredths, which that's what that is, that's 20 hundredths, well, then you know. 20 hundredths is 20%. Let's do another one. I think this will be pretty easy. One tenth. Okay. One tenth. What do we do first? Xander, do you know? What do we do first, buddy? Oh, I know. Make the denominator 100. Thank you, Xander. <laughs> Xander, can you tell me what to do, my love? <laughs> put, um, put a line and then divide it by 10 times. We're going we're gonna to do something times 10. Is that, is that what you're saying? We're going to multiply by 10. Okay, so let's, let's do that. 
So, because we want our denominator to get to this 100 magic number, right? 100, that's the sweet spot. That's the way we get to percents. So then what do I do? What do I do now, Mr. Xander? I did it to the bottom. Then you do it to the top. Yeah. By what do we do to the top? We multiply by 10 again, right? So then what's our numerator going to be? 10. And then I can finish done. this one. So now what's our percentage? 10%. 10%. 10%. And also 0.10. Yep. 10 hundredths, right? Okay, so now that we did it that first way, let's do it the other way. Okay, let's do it the long division way. I'm gonna take 10 and I'm gonna divide it into one. So 10 is my divisor. And then I write 1.00. Well, 10 goes into 100 10 times, right? Because we know 10 times 10 is, 10 is 100. So here is that which then equals that. Does that make sense to your brain, Miss Scarlett? Yeah, how about you, Miss Hania? I look yeah. like a seven a little. Is it starting to? Okay, let's do another one. This one might be a teensy bit more challenging, but some of you who remember quarters might get this pretty quickly, okay? One fourth. Okay. Gabriel, what, did, what should I do to get that denominator to be what we want it to be? Divide by 10. Did you say divide by 10, Kaiden? Multiply by 10. Multiply by 10. Oh. If I multiplied 4 by 10, what would I get? 40. 40. Is that what we want in our denominator? Uh, Do we want 40? Uh, uh, no, it's 100. Uh, we want 100. That's our, that's our magic. Multiply by 25. <gasps> yes. We want this number, right? And we know if we have quarters, quarters are worth 25 cents each. If we have four of them, that gives us a dollar, right? So that means four times 25 is equal to 100. Whatever we do on the bottom, we need to do on the top. So then what is my numerator going to be right there? Anyone can answer. 25. Yes. Great. And then which is 0.25 and it's equivalent to point, um, um, 25 percent. I couldn't have said it better myself, Sebastian. That's exactly right. So 25 hundredths is the same as 0.25 25 as 25 percent. Yeah. How's my audio? Michaela said it was a little glitchy. Are you guys able to hear me okay? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. And like it glitched for a tiny bit, like me up twice, but now it's better. Okay, yeah. Sometimes the internet got kicked out. Oh, I didn't get kicked out at all. Oh, well, I'm glad you didn't get kicked out. Okay, so now let's do it the other way. Okay, the fancy way, the long division way. We're gonna multiply, or we're gonna divide four into one. So four goes into one. Well, it can't go in with whole numbers. We have to use decimals. So I have 1.00. So we're gonna find out what does four, how many times does four go into 100? And our answer will be point something. 25, point 25. Yeah, we know four goes into 100 25 times, right? Point 0.25, once you have that point 0.25, you know, 0.25 is equivalent to 25 hundredths. Once you have that 25 hundredths, you know your percent is 25 
percent. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Look at you. Okay. We have time for one more. And the other two worksheets are exactly the same. They're all the same. They just have different fractions. So you get to practice your new skill. Okay. Okay. I'm going to give you two minutes to try to solve this on your own. And tell me what the percent is. And then Can we'll try to message you. You can try to message me, yes. Two minutes. This is Kelly. Yeah. I finished my decimal number rule. Oh, you know what? I saw that you private messaged me that. So you got up to five? Yep. Wow. How is it giant? Could you take a picture of it for me and send it to me? I would sure. love that. And Gus, is this making sense to you too, buddy? I think you could add it. Uh, kind of. Okay. This is like fifth, sixth grade level math. So, <laughs> way to go. <laughs> Just trying to. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just trying to join a Zoom meeting together today and try that. Yeah, see how that works. That's awesome. <laughs> we try to go nice and slowly. Yeah. Okay. You got about thirty <laughs> seconds, friends. Michaela, yes. Am I right? Thunder Dragon. Your second answer was yes. No, um, the, the first answer of those two, um, that was for the problem before it. Gotcha. Okay. Then you are correct. Sebastian, yes. Okay, Sylvia and Hania, are you guys just going to send me your answer? And if you look at your top uh, line on your laptop, you should have numbers there. And above the number five is the percent sign. And if you push shift and that five, it will give you a percent. It'll put a percent. Yeah, I already, I know what shift does. And if you do shift and caps lock at the same time, that gets it stuck on shift. And you push caps lock again, and it's not shift. Okay. Yes, this video is going on our YouTube channel for people who missed it so that they can watch it again. Okay. Is, is that okay? Is that all right, you guys? Yeah. Okay. So let's find, let's do the big reveal. The answer is 75% and here's how we got it. We know four times. I got the answer. Good. We know we have to multiply four times 25 to get 100 because we learned that in our last problem, right? So now we can multiply three times 25, and that gives us 75, because 25 three times is 75. It's like if you have three quarters, you have 70 cents, right? So there is one way to get our percent. So now we know three fourths is equivalent to 75%. Now let's do it the fun way. Four. Divide it into three. We put a decimal and two more zeros. So let's take a look. Four goes into 30. How many times? I know four times seven is 28, so that's pretty close. So I'm gonna write a seven, then I'm gonna subtract 28, and I'm gonna get two, and I'll bring down my zero, Four goes into 20 five times, because four times five is 20, right? That's how we get it. That's how we do it. Michaela, I have a question for you. Have you, um, have you encountered this yet in your decimals workbook, your intro to decimals yet? What, encounter what? Have you been doing this at all um, with your, your book? 
Oh yeah, we it, like multiplication, subtraction, addition. Okay. Great, awesome. Okay, guys, Chris is telling me that I gotta go. <laughs> it's her turn, <laughs> so I have I to. I gotta go too. Meeting. Bye, guys. Thanks for listening. Bye. 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 It was really fun. Good. Bye.